Brethren, the story of a great recovery. Part 1 England and Wales. Chapter 35 Light at Tredegar. The lamp which had been set burning in Cardiff about the middle of last century did not long remain a solitary illuminate, for scarcely had a decade passed by before the divine light, piercing the mists of religious uncertainty, found its way to cross the hills and through the valleys of South Wales, leaving in its course a beacon light here and another there, which today continue to send forth their gladdening rays. Round about this time there was indeed a spiritual atmosphere which could be felt. Thoughtful Christians, hitherto fervent enough in the ordinary routine work of church and chapel, were now turning to the Word for a solution to the inward promptings of a conscience not wholly attuned to God. Thus it came about that many believers, enlightened by a fresh revelation, became conscious for the first time in their Christian experience as to the will of God in relation to many New Testament passages, which, up to that time, had been to them truths yet unrevealed. The result was a return to the simplicity of apostolic ways and doctrine, so clearly defined in the Word of God. Such were the thoughts and feelings that disturbed the Sunday school superintendent of the Church of England in the town of Tredegar. His name was Ebsworthy D. J. Tapson, and as it was mainly through the step he took at this particular time that the assembly at Tredegar was subsequently formed, it seems fitting that the story should be told here. Converted as a lad of twelve through reading Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, he began a few years later to serve the Lord in lowly spheres in his native town of Newport, Moray. In 1868 he accepted an appointment in Tredegar, where his real activity as a Christian worker began. It was while here that, through prayerfully reading the Bible and allowing its light to lead him in the paths that the Lord has marked out for his people to walk in, he saw it was his privilege as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ to be baptized. Thus, in faithful obedience he, with William L. Hamilton, his brother-in-law, walked to Abergavenny, a distance of twelve miles across the hills, and publicly confessed Christ in the waters of baptism. This was August 12, 1876. On the following Lord's Day, at Mr. Tapson's house, Queen Square, a few met in that name alone, apart from all denominations, to worship God and shew forth the Lord's death according to the pattern given in the Scriptures. As the two men held fairly responsible positions under the Tredegar Iron and Coal Company, one being the surveyor and the other property agent, besides being prominently identified with church activities, this new departure created some considerable stir in the town. Amid much opposition and no little persecution several church members joined them, including Evan Williams, the choir master. Brought together in an altogether different spiritual atmosphere, and freed from the traditional ways and formalities of the state church, the little company seemed to feel and realize the Lord's presence in a manner never before experienced. Thus they continued, happy in the knowledge of a father's smile as in simple obedience they sought to carry out his will. When the numbers increased so that Mr. Tapson's house became too cramped, a room was taken in the temperance hall, where a company continued for some years. Later a primitive Methodist chapel was acquired. In 1918, because of the need of road improvements, the local council offered a sum for the removal of the hall. Just at this time, the Lord intervened in a remarkable way. A disused congregational chapel, seating about 250 people with excellent accommodation, was offered for 100 pounds and subsequently came into possession of the assembly. David Jones, of Llanetley, an evangelist well known in South Wales, came to Tredegar in the early days, and as a result of his faithful labors in the gospel, many were led to put their trust in the Savior. This was followed by a season of helpful ministry, when quite a number were added to the local assembly. Mr. Jones did not remain long in the district, but returned to his native Llanelli where the Lord used him in establishing a healthy assembly. For some years Mr. Tapson continued at Tredegar, and while diligently fulfilling his daily vocation he gave himself assiduously to the tender care of the young flock. On his removal to Cardiff he became associated with the assembly of believers in Plassey Street Hall, Penarth where he at once interested himself in the growing activities of the Sunday school. He also conducted a men's Bible class on Lord's Day afternoons. In this service the Lord greatly blessed him. Gospel work was carried on continuously on simple scriptural lines, hundreds were converted and added to the assemblies and these multiplied greatly. In 1895 Mr. Tapson's health gave way, and a voyage to South Africa was undertaken. Here he had opportunities of seeing life in many forms and of visiting lone and widely sundered children of God in the rising townships of the colony. 
Returning to South Wales in better health he gave himself unstintingly to visiting the various assemblies, which were continually increasing in number and needed just that well-balanced ministry of grace and truth in which Ebsworthy Tapson excelled. Tender and gracious as a mother with her children, writes one who was associated with him in the work, Mr. Tapson never surrendered the truth nor lowered the claims of his word, but clave to all that God had taught him and passed it on intact to others. How the Lord wrought in a wonderful and what might be considered a rather mysterious way in the building up of a neighboring assembly is worthy of being placed on record. A family from Tredegar immigrated to Scranton, USA, and were instrumental in the hand of the Lord in commencing a testimony at that place, where an assembly was also formed. An Abertillery family by the name of West Abertillery is a Monmouthshire mining town six miles from Tredegar went to Scranton about the same time, and among others a lad of about twelve years was saved and received into fellowship as a result of the preaching of the gospel by the members of the Tredegar family whom they met there. A year or two later the West family returned to their native place in Wales. Longing for the fellowship of other Christians, the young convert was disappointed and grieved to find that none of the denominational places which he visited remembered the Lord in the simple way that he had come to learn was the only true way. So he decided to stay at home on Lord's Day morning to read his Bible and give away tracts in the afternoon. One day, when handing gospel messages to passers-by, he seemed to be drawn in a peculiar way to a lad of about his own age, with whom he entered into conversation about his soul. So anxious did his newfound friend become, that he took young West to his home, which was above a public house. Here our young brother pointed the lad to Christ. This first fruit still remains and is today one of the elders of the meeting. Gradually others were added till they were ten to twelve in number. A gospel testimony was commenced both in open air and indoors, and it was decided to meet together to remember the Lord. So they rented a place for the purpose. That summer Douglas Perry arrived in the district with a tent, and a number were saved and brought into fellowship. Truly the wind bloweth where it listeth, thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. How wonderful are the ways of the Lord! But to return to Tredegar, baptismal meetings were an interesting feature of this assembly. The services took place at a pond called Golo, at the top of a hill 1,200 feet above sea level. To these meetings large numbers of unsaved people came out of curiosity, and a favorable opportunity was presented for preaching the gospel. While the ministry of those days was fresh and invigorating, writes Mr. D. J. Stevens, the need of separation from worldly principles and associations was constantly affirmed by our esteemed brother William Laurie Hamilton, who by his own separated life was a pattern to the rest of the believers. His consistent testimony in the neighborhood, as well as his unremitting labors in the gospel and in church government, are still remembered. The result of Mr. Hamilton's first step of obedience on that afternoon in August, 1876, already referred to when he passed through the waters of baptism at Abergavenny, was a great spiritual enlargement and sense of liberty he had not previously enjoyed. On that occasion, so filled was he with the joy of the Lord that he was unable to constrain himself from openly testifying for Christ. And this he did to all he met as he walked the twelve miles to his home at Tredegar. His faithful service in the years that followed in and around Tredegar, Rhymney, Ebuvale, and in the villages of the valleys, was marked by much of the Lord's blessing, and is remembered by many who were helped by his ministry. In happy fellowship with Edwin H. Bennett, of Cardiff, H. G. Lloyd, of Newport, N. E. J. Tapson, many small assemblies of believers were established by means of meetings for ministry and in gatherings of brethren for mutual help and godly counsel as to the shepherding and guiding of the church. In the spring of 1861, George Davies removed to Abergavenny from Grossmont, Herefordshire, his thoughts had been working along lines which had given some spiritual concern for a considerable time. Constant attendance at church services brought no peace to his distressed mind but seemed to accentuate the cloud of perplexity. While in this unsettled state he found a family from Hereford of like mind to himself. With William Lewis unexpectedly coming into his life at this juncture, George Davies was directed to a prayerful study of the scriptures. They were joined by R. H. Hill, a civil engineer, the son of a Devonshire clergyman, and William Green, both of whom were at that time engaged in the construction of a railway in the neighborhood. The former afterwards became the first secretary of the China Inland Mission and the latter was associated in later years with missionary work in Spain.
The first meeting for the breaking of bread was held in the drawing room of William Lewis, when seven sat down to remember the Lord's death. In the following year a few more having been added to the number, the assembly was removed to a building which had been used as a schoolroom, and there to the present time the company of believers meet around the Lord's table.